Unfortunately, I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm up next. I wanted to fill up the top of the list because it was pretty empty. People were filling up the bottom. And I stole your red thing. Okay. So, I'm going to be reading from my all time favorite book, Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. The book has been banned and challenged in multiple states over the years, mainly for profanity, sexual content, and depictions of violence. Yay! <laughs> It was specifically challenged at the Owensboro High School Library in Kentucky for the following sentence. The gun made the ripping sound like the opening of the fly of God Almighty. Huh. I'm gonna try to get to the profanity, the depictions of violence, and that specific quote. I hope I do not offend. Okay. Uh, Billy Pilgrim was, is the lead, uh, is the main character of the book. When Billy joined the regiment, it was in the process of being destroyed by the Germans in the famous Battle of the Bulge. Billy never even got to meet the chaplain he was supposed to assist, was never even issued a steel helmet and combat boots. This was in December of 1944, during the last mighty German attack of the war. Billy was wearing a thin field jacket, a shirt and trousers of scratchy wool, and long underwear that was soaked with sweat. He was the only one of the four who had a beard. It was a random, bristly beard, and some of the bristles were white, even though Billy was only 21 years old. He was also going bald. Wind and cold and violent exercise had turned his face crimson. He didn't look like a soldier at all. He looked like a filthy flamingo. And on the third, and on the third day of wandering, somebody shot at the four from far away, shot four times as they crossed a narrow brick road. One shot was for the scouts. The next one was for the anti-tank gunner, whose name was Roland Weary. The third bullet was for the filthy flamingo who stopped dead center in the road with a lethal beat, uh, when a lethal beat buzzed past his ear. Billy stood there politely, giving the marksman another shot. It was his adult understanding of the rules of, war, of warfare that the marksman should be given a second chance. The next shot missed Billy's kneecap by inches, going end on end from the sound of it. Roland Weary and the scouts were safe in a ditch, and Weary growled at Billy, get out of the road, you dumb motherfucker. The last word was still a novelty in the speech of white people in 1944. It was, a fresh and a, it was fresh and astonishing to Billy, who'd never fucked anybody, and it did its job. It woke him up, and it got him off the road. Saved your life again, you dumb bastard, Weary said to Billy in the ditch. He had been saving Billy's life for days, cursing him, kicking him, slapping him, making him move. It was absolutely necessary to, that cruelty be used because Billy wouldn't do anything to save himself. Billy wanted to quit. He was cold hungry, embarrassed, incompetent. He could scarcely distinguish between sleep and wakefulness now. On the third day, he found no important differences either between walking and standing still. He wished everybody would leave him alone. You guys just go on without me, he said again and again. Weary was as new to war as Billy. He was a replacement too, as part of a gun crew. He had helped to fire one shot in anger from a 57 millimeter anti-tank gun. The gun made a ripping sound like the opening of the zipper of the fly at God Almighty. The gun lapped up snow and vegetation with a blowtorch 30 feet long. The flame left a black arrow on the ground showing the Germans exactly where the gun was hidden. The shot was a miss. What had been missed was a tiger tank. It swiveled its 88 millimeter snout around sniffingly, saw the arrow on the ground, it fired, it killed everybody on the gun crew but weird. So it goes. <laughs> 